Hi guys, Dane here, and today I have wet hair, and I'm going to be doing the uh, my little wrap-up, I guess, for the Penguin Mini Moderns box set. So you guys might remember I bought this several months ago. I've been reading through it in order from 1 to 50. I've shared kind of reviews. They're all on my Goodreads and on my book blog. Uh, I've talked about some of them in my reading vlogs, and I even was doing reviews of each one. Uh, but that got a bit, a bit tedious. So... Today, what I'm going to do to celebrate the fact that I've finished reading all of them is basically I'm going to go through them with you from worst to best. I'm not going to say anything about any of the books except for... Uh, I'll talk about the five worst books and the ten best books and then everything in between I'll just read out the titles of. So, we'll start with the five worst. Drum roll, please for the worst book of the lot. It's Susan Sontag, Notes on Camp. This was just, oh, it made me angry, basically. Susan Sontag was trying to define what a camp is in terms of, you know, its use as an adjective, what the difference between, like, campness and being a dandy was. Bye, Biggie. Oh, he's caught the camera. I mean, honestly, all in all, I didn't agree with what she was saying, and it just infuriated me because of that. Okay, then the second worst book, Wendell Berry, Why I Am Not Going to Buy a Computer. Basically, the reason why Wendell Berry is not going to buy a computer is because he's a stubborn, arrogant old man and his wife does all of his typing for him. Basically. It was also written in 1988, and so, I mean, that was before Tim Berners-Lee invented the World Wide Web. So, you know, I think talking about why you don't need a computer in 1988 is very different to talking about it in 2018. And if you read that book looking for advice on it as a young writer, you would be given extremely bad advice. Okay, then we have An Anais Nin, The Veiled Woman. Basically, it's erotica, but erotica for me, it has to be done in a certain way for me to enjoy it. And Anais Nin just, she kept on using the phrase like his sex and her sex, for example, which annoyed me. Like, it just, it wasn't sexy at all. It was just cringy and, yeah. All right, then we have Audrey Lord. The Master's Tools Will Never Dismantle the Master's House. The reason why I didn't get on well with this one is because it sent out the message that basically, you know, for me, myself, as a, a white male, basically, I shouldn't even combat sexism or anything like that, you know? I should just leave it for... You have to be a black woman, basically, to be able to take down sexism. And for me, I think that's an unhealthy message to send out. Like... For example, the very title of it, The Master's Tools Will Never Dismantle the Master's House. Well, by her logic, I'm a white male, so I am the master. My tools can never dismantle the master's house, so why should I even bother? And I'm ignoring what Audre Lord wrote, and I'm going to continue trying to push for a more equal society where I can. All right, here we have Danilo Kiss, The Legend of the Sleepers. The reason why I didn't like this one, this was basically just a pseudo-religious text. But not even for a real religion. Like, at least if I'd read the Bible, I would have got, like, a broader understanding of Christians or whatever. Whereas this just... Oh, I don't even know what it was. So, yeah, those were my five least favourites. I'm now going to take you through the next 35 in roughly in order. So, I'm not going to say anything about these books. So, I'm not going to say anything about these books. I am just going to give you the title uh, of each one. The title and the author. So, 45... Cyprian Aquensi, A Glittering City. 44, Samuel Beckett, The End. 43, Francois Sagan, The Gigolo. 42, Vladimir Nabokov, Lance. 41, Primo Levi, The Survivor. 40, Jean Rhys, Till September Petronella. 39, Richard Kapuscinski, An Advertisement for Toothpaste. 38, Akutagawa and others, three Japanese short stories. 37, Clarice Lispector, Daydream and Drunkenness of a Young Lady. 36, Gazdanov and others, four Russian short stories. 35, Carson McCullers, The Haunted Boy. 34, Georges Lu Louise Borges, The Garden of Forking Paths. 33, Hans Falada, Why Do You Wear a Cheap Watch? 32, Yuko Chishima of Dogs and Walls. 31. Frederico Garcia Lorca, The Dialogue of Two Snails. 30. Sal Bello, Leaving the Yellow House. 29. Catherine Ann Porter, The Cracked Looking Glass. 28. Allen Ginsberg, Television Was a Baby, Crawling Toward That Death Chamber. 27. 
I think. I've lost count. Dorothy Parker, The Custard Heart. 26, Truman Capote, The Duke in His Domain. 25, Shirley Jackson, The Missing Girl. So I guess that is the midpoint. So all of these from here on were the above average ones. Bearing in mind, I mean, this is, these are Penguin Mini Moderns. So even my worst ones. Like those five worst I really didn't like. After that point, it's all up for grabs, you know? 24, Fernando Pessoa. I have more souls than one. 23, Stanislav Lem, The Three Electro Knights. 22, Patrick Cavana, The Great Hunger. 21, Daphne du Maurier, The Breakthrough. 20, Gertrude Stein, Food. 19, Italo Calvino, The Distance of the Moon. 18, James Baldwin, Dark Days. 17, Franz Kafka, Investigations of a Dog. 16, William S. Burroughs, The Finger. 15, Chinua Achebe, Africa's Tarnished Name. 14, Kathy Acker, New York in 1979. 13, Jack Kerouac, Peers of the Homeless Night. 12, Betty Friedan, The Problem That Has No Name. 11, Georges Simenon, Letter to My Mother. And that leaves us with our top 10. So I'll tell you a little bit about each of these again. So in at number 10, John Berger, The Red Tender of Bologna. Basically, it's a bit like, almost like dreamlike travel writing, all set in and around Bologna. Very well written, just beautiful. It almost feels as though you're there. You can almost smell the smells of the city. Number nine, Javier Marias, Madame du Defand and the Idiots. Basically, this is a series of short essay reminiscences about different authors, including Emily Bronte. Uh, who else do we have? I'll read you the titles from it. We have Madame du Defand and the Idiots, Nabokov in Raptures, Juna Barnes in Silence, Oscar Wilde after Prison, and Emily Bronte, the Silent Major. Just a very good bookish book. Number eight, Andy Warhol, fame. These are all basically one-liners from Andy Warhol about uh, fame, beauty, and love, in brackets, senility. With such great examples as, the symptom of love is when some of the chemicals inside you go bad. So there must be something in love because your chemicals do tell you something. Number eight, William Carlos Williams, Death the Barber. Now, I just love William Carlos Williams in general. This also has one of the poems that kind of introduced me to him. We studied it at university. I'm just going to find it now. Where is it called? It's called Icebox, I think. This is just to say, my bad. This is just to say, I have eaten the plums that were in the icebox and which you were probably saving for breakfast. Forgive me, they were delicious. So sweet and so cold. Number seven, Ralph Ellison, The Black Ball. Now, I'd never really read any Ralph Ellison before and I enjoyed this so much. I've actually bought Invisible Man, which is up on my TBR shelves up there. Great writing, uh, almost visionary, visionary, I would say. Here we have number five, Leonora Carrington, The Skeleton's Holiday. Now, I'd never heard of Leonora Carrington before. It says here, actually, these dreamlike carnivalesque fables by one of the leading lights of the surrealist movement are masterpieces of invention and grand guignol humour, I think. I don't know how to say that word. And, um, yeah, I guess the way I would describe it, it's almost like uh, uh, Tomorrow Never Knows by The Beatles mixed with uh, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, but then in book form. It was just very surreal and beautiful. Number four, we have John Steinbeck, The Vigilante. Now, these really stuck with me, and I'd actually recently read Of Mice and Men, not long before getting to this. Enjoyed that, enjoyed these as well, and uh, totally just stoked to read more Steinbeck, to be honest. Number three, George Orwell, Notes on Nationalism. I think this is more relevant than ever. Really well written, and... Um, you know, just a series of short essays. I actually read Orwell's uh, On Writing or whatever it's called. I don't think that's exactly what it's called, but it's something similar. And I really didn't get on with it very well. Whereas with these, I absolutely love the essays. And uh, we have Notes on Nationalism, Anti-Semitism in Britain, and The Sporting Spirit. And I particularly liked in The Sporting Spirit, he talked about how, you know, having sporting events against other countries can actually cause massive international furores. All right. Number two, Martin Luther King Jr., Letter from Birmingham Jail. This is actually the first book in the entire box set. I find it funny that the first book in the box set is my second best, and the last book in the box set was my second worst. But, um, yeah, these are all letters basically written. Well, actually, no, it's a letter 
that Martin Luther King wrote while he was in Birmingham jail and then the other one is like uh, the transcript of a sermon that he gave both of them just super enlightening and I think again they're more relevant now than ever because he kind of talks about you know basically they protested and they got told if you protest we're going to arrest you and they protested and got arrested and then they were like why didn't you just not protest or you know why didn't you go through the official channels and he's like we've tried that and you ignored us you know some things are worth going to jail for and finally my favorite of all of them albert camus create dangerously this is just the one that my mind keeps getting drawn back to and some of the things that camus said here about creativity my kind of interpretation of it is basically that he's saying you have to do things that are going to open yourself up to criticism if if everybody loves what you're doing you're doing it wrong if that makes sense like you're trying to pre please people as opposed to actually creating dangerously and I'm already about to do a reread of this and I want to read some more Camus as well but equally this is probably one of the few that I've read this year that has actually led to me thinking about my life and my approach to it as well another notable one for that would be what I talk about when I talk about running by Haruki Murakami I would definitely recommend that if you want to sort of better yourself in any way but yeah Albert Camus, Create Dangerously, favourite of the lot. So hopefully that was as fun for you guys as it was for me. Uh, obviously the uh, the ranking or whatever, it's not 100% and there's probably discrepancies between what I rated them at the time versus how I've ranked them now and that kind of stuff. But it's very difficult to rank definitively, you know. I'm pretty happy with my 10 best and my 5 worst. And like I say, the ones in between, all of them were good but not great, basically. Um, so, and I'm sorry if I've just offended you because your favourite author is in here. I mean, these are 60 odd pages long, so they're just like little introductions and whatnot. There are plenty of these who, uh, I didn't particularly think much of their Penguin Mini Modern, but I want to check out some of their other work. And so, uh, yeah, all in all, it was just a great way to read some new authors, and I'm, I'm glad I went for it. And now, the box set is done, and this just all goes on my red shelf, and I can start on my Vintage Mini Moderns box set. Hello! Hello, Echo. I also have my Horrible Histories box set, which I'll probably start on soon as well. So there we have it on that note. Thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of the Penguin Mini Moderns, and if not, which of them you would most like to check out. If you've read all of them yourself, which is probably unlikely, but there must be at least one other person out there that's done that, I guess. Uh, so let me know what you thought of my ordering of these. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe if you're new here, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.